Hi guys. Back in February we shot a series of videos discussing the RP46 project. We showed a intro video that had you know, a discussion about some of the modifications we'd like to make, the things that we would foresee doing, about how long it'd take, you know, money, function, some of that. And then we also did a test fire on a semi-auto rifle and on a full auto. Well, what we have here today is a follow-up to that to show you that things are still happening. We have people that have put down deposits that are curious about how things are going because we've overshot our original October 31st uh, chip date. Uh, about two weeks before that deadline, we updated the website to show that it would probably be second week of December. Well, now we're a week away from there, and it's still going to be a couple more weeks. To be honest, a few of these parts did give us a little more trouble than we were expecting. Um, with that said, all of the difficult parts are finished, and now all we have are just little parts and pieces that are in full production now, and once they are finished with their full production in a couple weeks, then they'll go to heat treat, come back, be assembled, fitted and test fired, and then shipped out to customers. So what I'd like to do today is show in a few different sections uh, some of the differences between the original and ours, and also let you see it shoot on a full auto and semi-auto uh, as we did before, but this time with our production parts. That said, there is a few parts that we have borrowed from the original setup since our parts are in production and are not finished. Uh, I will discuss those parts in a section down the line. Okay, one of the first things we'd like to show you is the differences in how the top covers attach and, uh, you know, that a gun with a pan magazine can go right to our our new top cover and back again with no issue and also show you just the difficulty involved in taking it on and off and uh, that it will also go on DP28s not just the DPM series so I'm going to move in a little closer to the camera so you can see some details and uh, show you the differences okay so what we have here is we have our our post sample DPM with the pan mag on it as all of you probably know pull back on the release on the rear sight base lift the mag off and set it aside now the original uh, RP46 top cover to attach it to the gun has this little hook here that you actuate with the carrying handle as you turn it you can see it hooks under a slot milled into the barrel jacket. It also requires you to mill a slot into the barrel. I'll show you that. You can see the notch is not very deep but it is a modification that must be done for the original. All of these things are things we didn't want you to have to modify in order for them to work with your gun. We wanted them to just work as they are. So uh, if you own a gun that we built for you or say a Wise Light or Keter Creek or uh, Century International Arms, you know, all these guys have made DPMs or DP28s and there are a lot of you out there that have built your own guns at home. As long as the dimensions from your rear sight release to this front catch are all pretty close to the original so that a original unmodified pan magazine will snap right on then we're pretty confident that your gun will accept our top cover without modifications so next thing I'd like to do is show you how the original one goes on and the difficulty involved in getting it on and off it's not real difficult but just so you can see the original top feed uh, belt feed top cover also required along with these modifications here for you to modify your catch just a little bit just by shaving the front end off of it so that whenever you pull it back it would clear the lip on the top cover uh, this this particular rear sight base has not been modified it's uh, 
we put the one back on here that was on the gun originally. We have a modified one, but I didn't bring it out here because uh, it's not necessary for our top cover. We fixed that also. But uh, I'll put here, this on here as best I can with that unmodified rear sight base so you can see. You shove it up under the mag catch with the carrying handle in the unlock position. Pull the charging handle back far enough to get inside the slot on the actuator. And then push down the rear until it went down in position and snapped back here. And then to lock it, you'd pull this handle over and it was locked in place. Now this works for carrying it and holding, the, supporting the weight and holding it to the gun. But if you ever had to open the, the top cover to access the belt or clear a jam, you had to unlock it and then open the top cover by pulling back on this, which means that now the only thing holding this down besides gravity is the charging, the charging handle captured in the actuator. Because this is unlocked, it's just sitting loosely under the, under the front mag catch and under the rear catch, it wasn't attached to anything because your catch is actually on the back of the top cover, not on the base itself. So we wanted to fix all of these, what we considered flaws. Um, purists probably won't see them that way, but we did. And so I would like to present to you our top cover and show you how much easier that one is. So to do that, I'm going to take this one back off. You would pull the rear sight loose, unlock the carrying handle, pull the charging handle back to clear, and lift it off. Pretty simple. Putting our top cover assembly on. It's pretty much the same as the original with just a few changes. We now have locking tabs here so that you do not have to have a modified barrel jacket or barrel. We also changed the latch design in the rear so that it locks down and stays down. Set it in position, open the teeth, slide it up under the front mag catch, pull the charging handle back to go inside the actuator, set the cover down and snap it into position. Now, no matter what you do, it is locked down solid. It cannot come off. Now, to clear a jam, instead of having to unlock the rear and unlock the front and have this thing all loose, it's still locked in the back, it's still locked in the front. You just push this forward, like on a PKM or any other belt-fed weapon, hinge it forward, and now you can access to clear jams, to, you know, whatever you need to do. You can see what you're doing. You don't have to take it off, and it's not loose. It's still, it's still solid on there. It still won't come off. As you can see, there are some black parts in here. These are the parts that we had to borrow that I told you about earlier. What they are is the main feed paw, the feed paw carriage, the upper feed paw, or stop paw, and the cartridge depressor and spring. All of these parts are currently in production. There's no issue with them, but we're just not done yet. So this will allow you to load this gun two different ways. You can either lay a belt in the, the uh, extractor, the cartridge extractor, and shut it like a PKM. Or, with the top cover closed and your starter tab, pull it in, lock it in place, and once it catches the first lock, you will, just like a Browning or most other belt feds, have to cock it twice to get a cartridge into the chamber. Okay, now that you see most of the differences, we're going to demonstrate removing it from the firearm. You pull the the rear sight release, just like on your magazine, lift it up, pull back on the charging handle to clear the actuator, push your little locking tabs in, and now lift it out. So there's an extra step of having to push these tabs together to get it off the weapon. Other than that, it's pretty much the same and uh, comes off as a unit. Now the next thing we'd like to show you 
is it going on a DP28? Okay, so what we have here is our uh, very first DP anything, actually. This was our uh, DP28 that we used to get our fire control group and sim auto features uh, through ATF Tech Branch. So this gun is, you know, a little rough around the edges. It doesn't have, you know, a, a front sight base that that is complete or will take a front sight. And you can see the dust cover slots a little rough, you know. There are a lot of things that are missing or ugly, but this is a first one. So we figured this would give you a good idea if you bought a rougher home build or maybe you home built one that was a little rougher than others, that it would still take this belt feed mechanism. Now, to show you that everything's pretty much the same as the, as the full auto, it still takes the magazine just fine. We didn't change anything for that. And now our belt feed assembly should go on just like it does on the M. Push the tabs in, slide it under this front catch, pull the charging handle back far enough to get in the actuator. And line up and push down and it locks in place. And so now it is attached to this, same as the machine gun. Being that these are this one is semi-auto and it has a hammer and disconnector to cock and set extra you know gas pressure is required for that so the gas ports are normally opened for the semi-autos anyway so that you do not have to further open up your gas port or modify your gas system all of the belt feeders will ship with booster cones so that you can attach a booster cone to your barrel attach the cover to the top of your gun and start feeding it belts. With all that said, on the last two weapons, uh, we would like to discuss belts a little bit. The most common belt for 54R out there right now is PKM or SG43 Gorgonov uh, belts. These also will feed in most of your Russian Maxim guns. Now another belt that's not everywhere but is fairly cheap is the actual made for a Maxim belt. It is a continuous belt. They are non-disintegrating just like the others but instead of being busted up into 50 or 25 round strips they're solid 250 round belts. Now this one we we uh, cut it so that it was a little shorter. And uh, we have not tried this yet on any of our guns, but we wanted to uh, shoot it to a note on that belt. Uh, I'm not sure that all PKM built loaders are built the same, but on my Polish loader that we have here to load our standard PKM belts, it will not uh, load the Maxim belt. They're just a little longer on the links and they will not fit down in the tray to be loaded. So if you do buy these just understand that your belt loader probably will not load these. You'll have to have a special belt loader or load them by hand which by hand they're kind of a booger. So just to keep that in mind. Okay so now we're on to the shooting part. First we're going to use our uh, semi-auto DP28 with the booster, our belt feed adapter, and we're going to use this one with the uh, starter tab to see how that works. Pull it in until it stops. Cock it once, pulls the belt into position, and allows the uh, cartridge extractor to snap over the rim of the first cartridge. second pull actually puts your first round in the chamber and now you're ready to shoot. When it's empty, and it is, you're ready to stick the next belt in. Okay. So on to the full auto. Maybe it'll work this time. And by this time, if you want to know what I mean, watch the little bloopers track at the end of this video and you'll see what 
excuse my humanity causes. But anyway, we're going to use this one by opening the, the top cover, placing the first cartridge into the uh, cartridge stripping pole that's on the uh, actuator, just like on your SG-43 or PKM, PKT, you know, any of those guns. If you have one or have seen one, then you'll be familiar with this. Snap it closed, make sure it's closed. And now it should be as simple as pull the charging handle back, let it lock, and let it rock. Okay, once it's empty, pull that out. And we're going to move on to the next belt. Now this is the Maxim belt discussed earlier, and it's a little wider. And this is actually the first time to test this type of belt in this top cover. So we'll load it the same way as the first one. First cartridge in. Close the top cover, make sure it's shut. Charge it back. Oh. That wasn't as much fun as the first one. Okay. So what you just saw was me fighting with the Maxim belt and it appears that it has the exact same issues in the belt feeder as it does in the belt loader. The fact that they're a little longer, they rub on one of the guides here that is necessary to be used with the more common SG-43 PKM belts and that little extra rub causes it to hang when it's trying to feed over and so it's trying to extract and pull a jammed up belt in the same uh, stroke and it just it doesn't have enough mechanical force to overcome all that and uh, so it appears though you will be stuck using PKM SG43 belts. That said they're still widely available they've got you know a ton of them. So minus a little hang up on a tight link, she runs good. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Okay, uh, the guy that was helping me load belts happened to walk up on the end of that last video with the uh, where the full auto hung on that like third or fourth round of the end. And he heard what I said happen and he suggested that I also bring this up. We are using, uh, it's, I, I believe it's made in Russia, I can't remember, but it's uh, commercial ammo, but a steel case, made overseas, and uh, in the belt loader, and you can't really see it, but you might be able to hear it, that little flick sound, they have a little burr all the way around the mouth of some of these cases that sticks proud of the neck diameter. And he said it was hanging up in the belt loader. Some of them wouldn't hardly go in to the belt and uh, actually bent a link on one of the belts trying to get the round in. So um, that may actually be why it hung that round, trying to pull it out against that lip. It may have actually hung up on that. Okay. Uh, some other notes. Um, this is the DPM DP series style gas system you know with the nipple on the barrel and a cup on the piston that actually slips over it so it wasn't really made to pull the belt 
Uh, the RP46 has a totally different gas system on it. That in mind, it still does work, as you saw with the other two shooting videos, it does still work this way. But for those of you that still want that better gas system, we are having heavy barrels made currently. They're not here yet, but they are being turned and profiled for us. Once they arrive, we're going to build the RP46 style gas blocks and gas pistons, because, and which will require to take the uh, the piston. There's a there's a pin that drives in to the uh, carrier that holds your DPM DP28 gas piston rod to the carrier body, and our setup will require you to drive that pin out, unscrew the old gas piston rod, set it aside, put the new gas piston in, repin it, and then uh, put the new heavier barrel in it and you can have the RP46 style barrel, gas block, and gas piston set up. And then with a better sealing gas system, it'll, it'll run super well and with no issues. Once we do get those in and prototyped up, we'll, we'll shoot another video and let you see that in action. Uh, we've also had some people ask if we plan on building full on RP46 builds, which the biggest differences between the DPM and the RP46, besides what I just discussed about the heavier barrel and different gas system, is the uh, barrel lock had a extra lever for a little extra leverage for the user to pull on and it actually locks the, uh, the barrel release in the released position so that you can take the barrel out without having to hold the button and pull on the barrel. You can just pull it forward, it locks, and then pull the barrel out. We will try to recreate those for you. Um, the biggest next difference is the buttstock on the RP46 has a sheet metal cover on this backside because a cleaning kit, a full-on cleaning kit, not just a brush, goes in the buttstock on those guns. That part we're not sure we'll do only because that is a stamp sheet metal part. Stamp sheet metal parts are very expensive to reproduce, and so that that part is uh, kind of up in the air. You may have to mill it out of solid, or just omit it and go without your cleaning kit and the buttstock. And but otherwise, everything else will be brought up to the RP46 state. Um, and something else, the uh, sheet metal dust cover that goes over here and also doubles as a feed chute when it's open. We are making those. They are just not finished. They're another one of the parts that we hadn't finished. And the only reason we don't have the original one on here is the original one, the little cramps that they use to make the hinges is very weak. And so our original one, when it's open, folds almost completely back under to interfere with the charging handle because those little tabs are breaking. It's like, say, it's a real cheesy hinge folded out of that sheet metal in it obviously didn't work very well so we're going to try to improve that so that doesn't happen to you uh, other than that uh, no other changes should be necessary but we do plan on building full-on rp46s so that's very exciting for us and uh, we hope you're excited too um, stay tuned for any future updates and for those of you that have put down a deposit uh, just a couple more parts and you will receive your top covers. Thanks again. Setup is very similar to a PKM or SG43. Um, so any of those, those of you that have those firearms, this will be very familiar. Shut it, make sure it latches fully and that the belt is still pulled over. For those of you not familiar with how this is supposed to work, it was supposed to go bang. Okay, on to the shooting demonstration. We're going to we're going to do our uh, semi-auto. We're going to use the belt with the starter tab to demonstrate what I was talking about earlier. 
Pull it in until it locked. Cock it once to pull the belt in. This should put the cartridge extractor over the first round and then charge your first round.